Sometimes when we're juggling too many things at once, we can lose sight of the natural sequence of an art project. Studies show that multitasking is not a very effective way to get results. So in today's episode, I wanna talk about the four phases of an art project that you must do in order so that you can stay focused and more productive. Hello, love, welcome. My name is Jennifer Laurel Keller. I'm an acrylic and mixed media artist and instructor, and this is the Wilded Art Show. Juggling art projects is often more challenging than it sounds. I used to think that being an artist meant beautiful days spent painting and being in the zone, but there are other steps of art projects that are just as important as creating the actual art. As I talk about this, I'm working on an 11 by 14 acrylic and mixed media abstract on a canvas panel called Soul Window. It's in my online shop and I'll link it below. And in this piece, I went through all of the four phases that I'll discuss in this episode. So the process was much more grounded. I used to be so focused on the hustle of art making so much that I was multitasking too many things at once. I would run around from the studio to the store, to my computer, to networking opportunities, and it was burning me out and my creativity was the first thing to take a hit. Plus, I didn't have time to think about whether I was chasing the right projects. I was trying to do anything that crossed my path. I would get involved in group shows that had no relevance to what I wanted to do as an artist. And because these opportunities weren't a fit, I would dread the actual project. I remember in particular a time when I signed up for a group show that had a theme of getting outside of the box. That was the name of the show, Outside of the Box. The concept of this left me so blocked because I wasn't following these four steps of an art project and I didn't recognize that it was not right for me. The theme was a cute way even of taking artists out of their specialty. So I was mulling it over thinking like, how do I get outside of the box? Do I construct an actual box and make the piece literally extend out of it sculpturally Or do I paint the box on a canvas? Or do I actually push myself out of the box metaphorically? Because I didn't go through these four steps of an art project, I ironically felt more inside of the box than ever. And what I ended up doing for this project, and this is so embarrassing to even tell you, but what I did for the project was staple a bunch of fake flower petals to a cradled wood panel. It was so bad. (laughs) Total failure. It looked so crafty and juvenile, and it was one of the worst pieces I've ever made easily. I also had to drive an hour and a half away to drop it off, and I was so nervous that I did not even attend the reception Basically, it was a huge waste of time, and I don't think I even picked it up at the end. They probably just ended up tossing it in the trash eventually. But this got me thinking, how could I avoid this in the future and make the process of creativity more effective and aligned with my path? Because I want to be the most authentic to myself while staying productive and building success. And what I came up with is a way of thinking about the cycle of creating. And I borrowed a philosophy from nature because nature has seasons and times for everything to take place. And I find that when I go against the natural timing for things that I will have a lot more struggle in my life and I feel agitated and confused and that low energy will be apparent in my work. So I started to consider my projects as having their own seasons, and this helps me tremendously to stay on track and make better art. So if you're excited about creativity and being in a natural flow state, hit the like button and let's get into these steps or seasons of making an art project. All right, let's start with the first phase of an art project. This is the season of new beginning, spring. Spring is a time when the world becomes alive with new creative energy. 
What was dormant is now waking up. And it's the same for creative ideas. In this season of our art project, we basically want to get pollinated with inspiration. Now, I always say there are two places to find inspiration, inside and outside. So in the last two episodes of the Wild Lit Art Show, I talked about those two ideas way more in depth. Those episodes are called Where to Find Inspiration, part one and two. I'll link part one to the end screen of this video. So if you want to go deeper into the best ways to get inspired, wait until the end of this episode and you'll find that info. But in a nutshell, this is the time to gather inspiration. Imagine yourself as a little bumblebee and go find all of the pollen and the nectar that you can and explore and sample all of the delights that the world has waiting for you. Look at everything through the eyes of an artist and you'll have lots of inspiration that you'll be able to use to make the sweet honey of your art. So you're looking for inspiration, but you're also gathering it. You're researching it. You're writing it down, journaling, and stirring it into your recipe for creating. You'll be gathering the supplies you need and the spark to get you going. Sometimes when you're gathering, you might find that you have too much. It might be more than you can carry, or in other words, too many ideas for one project. So journaling about which ideas are the best and which you need to leave behind is important. It's better to have one or two strong ideas than try to cram everything into one project. So edit your ideas down if you have too many, because once we get into the next season, you won't want to have to go back to the drawing board. Next up in the four steps or seasons of an art project is, of course, summer. Now your garden is growing. The days are longer, the work is stronger, just like the sun. You'll bask in the height of your creating. This is when the rubber meets the road or the brush hits the canvas. You're prepared from the work you put in in the spring and now you have a clear vision and the right materials. So hit the studio and make wonderful art. This is also the season where you might have to set some boundaries as well. In the summertime, there are so many distractions, so many pesky critters trying to get a piece of your garden. Many people will want your attention with appointments and responsibility. While you're creating, make sure to schedule your working hours on your calendar and let people in your life know not to bother you. We have to tend our projects and put in the work while our vision is alive or else they'll die on the vine. Instead, enjoy the process and get lost in these longer days. This will allow you to stay in that beautiful flow state and make inspired artwork. Okay, we're halfway through our phases or seasons, but don't forget there's an insightful bonus at the end, so stay tuned for that. And next, we have fall. In fall, it's time to share the harvest. Even if you're a new artist or a student and not trying to really sell your work, this is an important season in the life of your artwork. After your piece is finished, it needs to be shared in some way. Something magical happens when we do this. We are rewarded. And it's like if you were to grow a bountiful harvest, we don't just want those fruits and vegetables to rot. Somebody needs to consume them to get the nourishment. And just like breaking bread, art is sweetest when it's shared with a community. This could look like any of the following. Number one, it could look like showing it to a trusted peer or mentor. This should be someone who understands art and likes talking about it without judgment. If you share your artwork with people who are blocked, they might project some of their own baggage onto you. If you share your art with someone who doesn't have an interest in art, their indifference could leave you feeling deflated. So whether it's a teacher, a fellow creative, or a fan of the arts, make sure you share it with someone who appreciates art. Number two, you could share it on social media. Take good pictures of your art, post it, and 
get some likes and feedback to feed. Yes, feed because this is a harvest to feed the creative spirit of yourself and your community. This way you can build a group of fans that might eventually become buyers down the road. Number three, market your art for sale. Whether you want to sell your art online or in person, seek opportunities to showcase your art. This could be on your own website or other online markets like Etsy or Fine Art America, or even in person at galleries or alternative spaces. There is an audience for all types of art. If your art is good, it should eventually sell, but it does take some time to find the right audience. You won't do yourself really any favors if your art collects dust and takes up space in your studio. And if you share the bounty of your art with others, it can make a powerful difference in the world. We have one more step in this list, plus a special bonus, so stick around till the end. I also wanted to give you a heads up that in the next episode of the Wild at Art Show, I'm going to share a studio tip about what to do with leftover acrylic paint on your palette. So if you feel like you waste a lot of paint and want to save some money, double check that you're subscribed to my channel and hit the notification bell so you won't miss it. And now let's move on to the next step, which is, you guessed it, winter. This is the season of your art project when things appear dormant on the outside, but there's a lot going on under the surface. This is when you take the time to process your project, both intellectually and physically. Take in your work, assess what went well and what you might like to change about your process moving forward. Think about the fundamentals like color, texture, materials, scale, and composition. And if you like, take some notes about these ideas. Also, tidy up your space. Straighten your materials, sort out things that are used up, make a shopping list for your studio, and make any upgrades that would make your process easier. Clean off your desktop both at your workstation and online. After a big project, I tend to have a lot of big image files on my computer and my phone that I can now delete and I'll update my inventory, I'll work on my storage upkeep, I'll declutter and cleanse my space. And I always say that it's good to make a mess when you're making art, but it's important to clean it up afterwards because a mess can physically get in your way when inspiration strikes next. This is also an important time to tend to the other parts of your life. Spend some time with your loved ones, treat yourself to some self-care, make healthy food, get some exercise, do some yard work, or take on a little home improvement task. Get a haircut, take yourself on a date, whatever you want. Anything that you've been meaning to do so that you can enjoy life for yourself as a non-artist because work life balance will prevent you from burning out. All right, I still have the bonus coming up, but I have a quick question for you. What type of art do you make and what phase or season of your current project are you in? Let me know in the comments. And if you want help making more artwork so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time, I have about 30 online classes for you on Skillshare. Those are linked through my website, which is always linked below. And today I have a class review by Alicia Jaramillo, who took my class, Let Go and Layer with Mixed Media Journaling. Alicia says, I've been collecting clippings and wanting to start an art journal for a while, but wasn't really exactly sure where to begin. This class was just the nudge I needed and showed the steps of how to build the layers. I also really liked that the instruction was short and to the point. I immediately went and created my first journal page and enjoyed it thoroughly. That is awesome, Alicia. Thank you for joining me for class and I'm proud of you. So if you would like to check that class out or any of my other classes, you'll find the link below. Okay, now for the bonus. One way to level up all of these cycles and creativity is to batch your process. So instead of making one work of art at a time, you can make a mini series all at once. This way, your work will look cohesive and you don't have to go back to square one for each piece. You can go through each of these four phases or seasons with several pieces 
or even just two at a time. So gather your inspiration, create them together in a batch, share them as a group, and then you'll be able to get cleaned up and shift over to your self-care and take fewer pauses in between. It's more efficient, just like baking a batch of cookies instead of one at a time. So if you'd like more binge-worthy inspiration, I'm going to leave a playlist and a recommended video for you here. Happy creating and much love. <laughs>